And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I'm a fortunate person. My favorite game, Cosmic Encounter, keeps having expansions made for it that I did not expect. I did not expect Cosmic Eons to come out. They announced this a bit ago, and it was very happy, like, hey, a new expansion, very pleased. This one's named after Eons, which Eon was the original company that made Cosmic Encounter, and this was made by the original designers of the game, along with input from the very strong fanatics of Cosmic Encounter, and it shows. This introduces the Alliance styles and Essence cards. Um, so let's take a look at what's inside this box and some of the aliens, and then I'll tell you what I think. So the first thing this expansion comes with are these new alliance styles, which are going to add a new feature to the game. When you ask allies to join you, each player is going to take one of these. And the game comes with six of them. These are actually very hard to snap together, but it can be done. And so when alliances are asked for, you're going to decide whether you're going to help the attacker or the defender. You'll see there's a little planet there. And then you're simply going to spin these to figure out which one you're going to do. So here, for example, I'm sending three ships to help the attacker. I'm sending two ships to help the attacker, or I'm going to send four ships there to help the defender. There's a star there for when there's a very weird, unique circumstance, which you'll very rarely need to use these. And there's also a card. This card is in a new variant that you can use with these. The variant is called the foreign aid optional rule, where basically, even if you're not invited, you can still pick this. You can offer a card to one of the main players and they can accept it from you. If they accept it from you, they can also ask you to ally with them, even if they previously did not do so. Uh, so these, everyone can pick them at the same time and then reveal them and you send your ships to help the attacker and the defender. So there's new aliens in this game and the aliens come with their flare cards for all of them, bringing the total number of aliens, I believe, up to 195 at this point. So we're going to take a look at some of the aliens here. I'm not going to go over every single one. I'm just going to go over some of them briefly and then show you my 10 new favorite aliens. So first we're going to start off with two aliens that I actually dislike. Um, we have the tortoise. The tortoise can skip their turn basically to draw two rewards. And they basically can skip their turn consistently. And at the end of the game, they get one really long turn to see if they can win. So even if someone else has one, the tortoise could be like, all right, hang on. First, we're going to try to win on our own. The pretender can essentially make you switch seats with someone else, which gives you all their planets, their color. You switch everything except alien powers. Everything else is going to go to somebody else. I'll just... This one's too random. This one's just like the machine, which is already my least favorite one. The game ends and it's like, oh, but I'm going to take a really long time on something that's very fun for me, but not for anybody else. Blah to both of those. Fire Dancer is a complicated way to add fire. It comes with fire tokens and you put attack cards under those, making the defense more powerful. The particle can join planets together. The Bleeding Heart, I do like them. They, they can say, let there be peace. And one of the things you'll notice about Almost all the aliens in this set are very strongly thematic. So the Bleeding Heart here can say let there do peace. And all attack cards with 10 or lower become negotiate cards and compensations doubled. So it's a fun one to push that. The AI gets a token added every turn and can look at other people's cards. The Evil Twin can pick someone else to be their Evil Twin uh, during each encounter. And that person will take all the damage and problems that you have, which is a lot of fun. They come with an Evil Twin token to give out. Uh, we have the Moocher. The moocher can, if you don't invite them, they can essentially land on a couch in your area. So the game comes with couches. These act as if planets. So it's just a very funny thematic uh, power. The peddler can sell cards, which is pretty cool. This one almost made my top 10. I like the peddler. The crusher can crush enemy ships. The, the oligarch here can get extra cards. The pack rat here can collect things. The surgeon can cut things. The cult, you can have different people join the cult. The perfectionist, get rid of things you don't like. The assistant. Okay, so now the assistant has some essence cards. There are six aliens in this set that have 
essence cards. Um, actually, I think it's seven aliens. Um, each set of these essence cards, you're going to shuffle them, and you'll draw three of them into your hand. And whenever you use one for whatever reason, you get another one. And these essence cards can be different things. So for the assistant, the assistant can offer these cards to someone else. If that person gets the card, then the assistant gets a reward. Then later on, that person can use the card for a reward. So for example here, and anytime the assistant will find a card, you name it a discard pile and give it to you. That's fantastic. The assistant can also do that exact same thing though, when they take it or get another reward when you decide to utilize what they've given you. The Maven is right. This one is gonna be one I think some people don't like because if they're not involved in, if, in a, being a main player ally, they can basically decide who wins uh, a round. The Architect can put planets on top of each other. The Emperor is in charge and can force other people to give tribute to him. The Nanny is another character that comes with essence cards and they can f try to force someone else to play a negotiate card or give them a consequence which does something bad and puts that character in time out. Uh, which means I can't talk to other people. So let's take a look here at my 10 favorite aliens. Number 10 is Alien. Now this is partially because it's an alien called Alien, which I think is hilarious, but they can traumatize other players, steal their ships, return those ships, but then they get these cards to other players, the essence cards that will do things like depression. If you reel an attack card, its value is zero, or victim complex, things like that. Then there's the Klutz. Every time the Klutz draws two or more cards, they can drop some of them, effectively clearing their hands from them. They can also pick up other people's ships in different situations and drop them, causing that ship to be removed from the game. Then we have the Anarchist. The Anarchist is another one with essence cards. The Anarchist can have a rule in play. Whenever they lose, they get one of these rules in play. So you have the right to see all cards drawn from the decks for rewards. This rule only works for them, but they can eventually offer it to someone else. If that person takes it, and that person uses the rule for whatever reason, then the rule becomes a rule for everybody. And pretty soon there's going to be all sorts of rules in play, and if the Anarchists can get all eight of their rules in play, then they will win the game by that way. A lot of fun, very crazy and insane in games. The Coward can run away. Um, your opponent automatically wins, but your ships don't die for the Coward and your flight counts as a success rather than a loss. So that's pretty interesting. You know, you, you, you get points for running. I like the idea of the coward. It's a fun one to play. Hunger is an easy one to play. You like cards? Hunger gets them for you. Every turn you're stealing a card from each player whose turn it is. On your turn you steal a random card from every other player. The Nightmare, another essence one. This one here can give nightmares to other players and at any point can flip that and something bad will happen. If you're winning the game along with one or more players and said those other players are winning without you. That's naked in public or unprepared or seeing the dead or running but getting nowhere. Very fun thematically. Do you hate the virus? Well, now you have someone new to hate. Multitude. Uh, whenever there are no tokens on a sheet, you put one here on the times one sheet. Whenever your color or a special destiny card, this doubles it. So there are times two, times four, eight, 16, 32. But whenever a wild is, it goes back to times one. And whenever your ships fight, they get multiplied by this amount. So, which is <laughs> amazing, a really cool thing. You can become super powerful, but then you can drop in an instant. The hypochondriac comes with a pile of hypochondriac tokens on the player. If you have a lot of hypochondriac tokens, the most, or tie for the most, you can't win the game by landing up on someone else's planet. The hypochondriac can just pick someone else and say, ah, you're making money easy because of whatever reason, and give them a token when they're the main player or an ally. Also, whenever you beat somebody, you can give them half of your ally, of your tokens, except that hypochondriac, you can only ever give him or her one token back. Really fun one to play thematically, and you can stop other people from winning. The cloak is another insane power. Uh, whenever the attack values of players are 20 or more, the cloak gets to tell everyone to close their eyes. Everyone looks at the board, puts their hands down, and then the cloak can move one ship and or one card. And if people can figure out how they move the ship or card after they open their eyes within 15 seconds, then nothing happens. They, those, the stuff goes back and the person who gets it gets a reward. Otherwise, you can leave that stuff there. Super sneaky. Uh, as the quote can maybe even take a planet for the win. And then the sheriff who also has essence cards. These are tickets. The sheriff is my favorite because he can give people tickets for illegal parking, excessive force. If they break a rule, they'll get a ticket and have to pay a fine. And when they pay the fine, the sheriff can take the fine if they want to. 
uh, uh, but that means that person can't be ticketed by the sheriff again. Now notice I'm only going over very briefly what each of these aliens do. They're much more involved, several of them, than that. You'll notice that most of the aliens in this set are yellow or red lights. There was only a couple greens in there completely. The first thing that you need to get here is this is like advanced Cosmic Encounter. If I was buying expansions, I'm not saying this would be the last one that I would buy, but I definitely wouldn't recommend this for people who are new to Cosmic Encounter. Most of these aliens are fairly complex. I'm not saying they're not fun to play, but there's some fairly complex ones. There's some aliens in here I don't like, and there's some aliens in here that I probably won't play with very often, but there's aliens from pretty much every set that I won't play with. In fact, because I keep everything in one box, this expansion provided me with a problem. How am I gonna fit everything in the box when it just barely fit in? So I'm actually retiring 20 aliens, I believe, so that all the aliens can fit in the box. And I took all the aliens out of different sets. I just picked which ones I didn't like. And Cosmic Storm, incidentally, had by far the most aliens removed. But uh, other than that, everything fits in. So there's like 195 aliens. I'm not gonna miss 20 or so. I like the aliens in this one, but they are more involved. Essence cards are neat. I love giving people bad dreams and giving them, you know, alien encounters and tickets as the sheriff and timeout as the nanny. That stuff is fun, but it is also, it adds another level of stuff going on in the game and more cards. And how does this one play exactly? And there's gonna be a lot of questions that are asked and I'm sure the FAQ for this is gonna be quite lengthy after a point in time. So I like these new powers. In fact, some of them, I think the sheriff in particular uh, is gonna go into my top 10 aliens ever for the game. I just love the theming of it. And I have to say, I really, really like that they, they, they made these so much fun to play. Hypochondriac, you acted like, oh man, you, you just sniffed, uh, get away from me, and you throw that person a token. Or if you're the nanny, uh, 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 or the klutz, these just really have the, if you're someone who likes to get into that fun, act like who your alien is as the game goes by, these are really cool in that regard. So the aliens have a thumbs up for me. Just be cautious if you've not played the game before. I would, this would be one of the later expansions I would get. The Alliance Styles, this is a must, right? This is great. I can't believe that the game is 40 years old and they came up with something that seems so obvious in hindsight. This Alliance Style here where you're essentially picking everyone at the same time, not only helps speed up the game, but it just works really well. Now I do wish they had used good dials. These dials are okay, as I showed you, this here is the defense and that's the offense, but you'll have find people who will forget or they'll point to the wrong one. These are not the easiest things to turn. They're pretty small. So you have to hold it by the edges and then turn the wheel with the other side. It's just not the easiest thing. It would have been nice if you had one that you could have done with one hand and just kind of spun the dial to where you want it to. I'm kind of surprised here because Fantasy Flight usually does high quality. And if I can find any decent replacement for these, they're gone. I love using them, but the actual functionality of them is okay. So is this a great expansion? Well, it's not the best one. Dominion is still probably the best expansion. And so is probably the first one. I like I like rewards I'll always use, but I mean, this does come with something I'm always gonna use in every game. This does come with some really great aliens, a good mix of aliens. And for me, a veteran cosmic player, I play Cosmic Encounter all the time. Fantastic, this is not for everybody, but I'm glad to see more fresh ideas. Are they done now? I don't know, I mean, it's probably bugging them that they're just under 200 aliens, so I would assume that we'll go over that at some point. But yeah, I was satisfied with the last expansion. I'll say it again. I'm very satisfied with this one. I like these aliens a lot though. Can't wait to see some of their interactions. I'm not sure I'll wanna play with some of these in a two power alien game, but you never know. That is Cosmic Eons. Dice Tower Judgment for experienced players. Excellent. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Boom.